And that core of young guys that was good when they were coming up are all spread out. And now they've got Ben Simmons who doesn't even play. Good morning, Midlothian Baptist Church. It's great to see all of you here today. We want to welcome you to church this morning. So if you're in the auditorium, we're going to start our worship by praising God through song. So feel free to stand up in here and let's lift our voices to the Lord today. 
And if you are out in the foyer, come on in. We're going to praise and we're going to make some noise this morning because there's joy in the house of the Lord. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, He parted the raging sea, my God, He holds the victory. Let's sing it out. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. He hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God, still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Now we're royalty We were the prisoners Now we're running free We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise Let's sing that again Cause we were the beggars Come on church Now we're royalty We were the prisoners Now we're running free we are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Here we go. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place We won't be quiet We shout out your praise 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 Amen. Amen. And I pray that you feel that joy that is here this morning. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. We worship a God of wonders. We worship a God who has ultimate strength and power, and he loves us, he created us, and he rescued us. Let's sing his praise this morning as we worship him. We're going to do our next song, God of Wonders. It's one of my favorite songs. It's got a great message, and I pray that you use this song as a prayer to lift your heart up to God this morning and to prepare your heart to worship him and hear from him as Pastor Ken preaches this morning. Of water, earth, and sky The heavens are your 
your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy. Celebrate the night as I stumble in the darkness. I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy. heaven and earth and we worship you this morning we praise you this morning we pray that our songs would be a sweet sound to your ear this is our offering that we bring to you lord it's not much but lord may it be pleasing to you because you are the king of kings and the lord of lords amen s 
all to the other side Knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our Savior died Praise the can be seated. And once again, we want to welcome everyone here this morning. It's great to see all of you that are here with us. And for those of you that are worshiping online, we want to welcome you as well. If it's your first time worshiping with us here in the auditorium, in the seat in front of you, there's a folder that has a welcome card. We'd love for you to fill that out and drop it in the offering box as you leave. And if you're worshiping online, there should be a connect with us link that you can click on and fill out the same information. Well, let's go ahead. We're going to get into our Bible reading for today. So you want to go ahead and turn with me to the book of Psalms. We'll be in Psalm 19, and I'll read verses 1 through 6. And as you're turning there, you know, I want to brag on our church for a little bit. We are a church who loves to live on mission. And right now, I want you to pray for a group of people who are getting ready, or they should be leaving either today or tomorrow, if I remember correctly, or maybe they're already on their way, um, to go to Kentucky and help with some relief there. But we've got a group of them that have gone there. Chris just got back from doing a missions trip with Eight Days of Hope and doing some relief, I believe it was in Mississippi, from the tornadoes that were there. And this summer, the teens are going to be going to Boston on a missions trip there. So we are a church that loves to live on mission. We support many missionaries, and we send groups on short-term trips. So be in prayers, especially for those that are in Kentucky or on their way to Kentucky right now. They've got a big week in front of them. And uh, if you see Chris, ask him about how things went uh, in Mississippi as well. Well, let's go ahead and get into our psalm reading for today. Uh, Psalm chapter 19, uh, verses 1 through 6. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. 
Its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it reveals to us who you are, even just a portion of who you are, so that we can come to know, love, and worship you. Father, we thank you for those who are willing, even if it's just short-term missions, to go on a missions trip. And Father, we pray for those that are on their way to Kentucky right now. We pray that you would keep them safe, Lord, and that you would use them to show your love to the people there. Father, we thank you for Chris, who has just returned from an eight days of hope trip. And we pray that the work that he did there with that organization would spread your word and your love to those that have experienced a horrible tragedy. Father, we thank you for our many missionaries that are serving around the world today, some, in some cases in places where it's dangerous to preach your word and to stand for truth. And so, Father, we pray for them. And we pray that they would spread your word to all peoples in all of the world so that one day, everyone who is saved, Lord, we can worship with you and we can see the work that you did through us. In your name, amen. All right, our hymn today is I Sing the Mighty Power of God. Let's stand and sing today. Amen. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. He formed the creatures with his word and then pronounced them good. Lord, how thy wonders are displayed wherever I turn my eye. If I survey the ground I tread, or gaze upon the sky, there's not a plant or flower below that makes thy glories known. And clouds arise and tempests blow by order from thy throne. While all that borrows life from thee it is ever This time we're going to watch a short video and then children as soon as the video is finished you may be dis you may be dismissed to children's church. Hey love, where have you been lately? I've been looking for you. I know you haven't disappeared off the earth, but it sure feels like you've gone on vacation for a while. I mean, across the street I see strife and sadness and a marriage falling apart. Down that alleyway and he's hungry and cold and lonely. And don't you see her in her car crying at the stoplight? Love, listen to me. I believe in you. I really do. We have a whole holiday dedicated to you. Cards, candy, the whole bit. I guess I'm just a little disappointed. That's all. You seem to have gotten lost inside a world that feels so desperate for you. I must find you again. Because you light up all the rooms. You bind us together and cover a multitude of sins. God tells us that when he lives in us, his love is made complete in us. Burning like a blazing fire and driving out fear and darkness. We know this because when we were the farthest off course and refusing to listen to his voice and cloaked in the darkest of dark, Christ still died for us. So I'm choosing to love God with all my soul, mind, and strength. I'm crossing that street to my neighbor's house and bringing blankets to the alleyways and praying for those I don't even know. My language will be love 
because God is love. While they're going, uh, I wanted to thank the man that cooked last week. There's, I think I missed that, but man, it's a great job. So thank you for that. Uh, uh, thank you very much for that. All right. Uh, thank you all also, everyone that brought guests last week. I appreciate you doing that and prayed. We had a full house last Sunday. Um, and uh, thank you for that. Do pray this week for those in Kentucky. They'll be back on Friday. Uh, a lot of work they're going to be doing, so they'll need God's protection. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the joy it is to be in your house. I pray that you would meet with us. Bless those teaching the classes uh, later and all the churches in our city. Father, we pray that uh, the ones that are loyal to your word, that you would really uh, anoint them today with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Are y'all cool? Too cool? No? Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Hey, I heard about a uh, group of atheist scientists, and uh, they said to God, uh, God, we have figured out how to make a man, so we don't need you anymore. And God said, well, okay, do it. And so the atheist scientists reached down to pick up some dirt, and God said, hey, no, get your own dirt. <laughs> you heard that before, right? All right, look on the screen. I mean, the back here, uh, Victoria. Uh, God has spoken to what we're going to talk about today. Have you ever heard of, ever heard of Nietzsche, the German philosopher? He, he said the screen went blank. <laughs> so what happened? Uh, there it is. Now go to the next one. Uh, Nietzsche said, God is dead. God said, Nietzsche is dead. <laughs> <laughs> right, because Nietzsche is dead. Do you think he believes in God now? <laughs> he certainly does. So today I want to talk to you about God is. We're going to do a little short series here. God is and he has spoken. So we'll look at two uh, Sundays here, Lord willing, where we talk about how we know God is. Uh, and then uh, the last Sunday uh, of the month will be and he has spoken. I know most of you have no problems to believe in God. But uh, maybe you know of someone that doesn't, so you can invite them to come or to watch online. Um, or um, this will give you some uh, information that you can use to help as you uh, try to witness for the Lord and uh, try to convince people that God is. Now, you can go to the Internet and you can find many intelligent, articulate charismatic personalities uh, that are convincing in whatever argument that they are presenting uh, in any position that uh, about God, you know, God is, God doesn't exist, uh, or um, he is a creator of all things, or it came from evolution, we don't need God, uh, or there's those who believe in theistic evolution, which means that God started the, created the world through the evolutionary process, uh, reform theology about God, or God will save every person theology about God. So uh, there's all kinds of Interesting people that can articulate their position. And uh, you can go to them and you can be convinced. And, and uh, you need to be thinking about, though, is who is this person and where are they getting their information? And uh, who's telling me this? But today, I want to talk to you about, you know, God is. Now, the Bible is a collection of 66 small books. They were written over 1,600 years by 40 different people from all various walks of life, from a farmer, Amos, to a king, David, and others that wrote the Bible. But all of them are connected by a common theme that God created, and uh, He is the ultimate uh, being. Man is sinful, and God reached out uh, to separated man to bring mankind back to Himself and to heal that broken relationship, as we just sang about in those beautiful songs today. And... Um, and the Bible declares that God is. And that's one way we know that God exists. The Bible declares that God is. And although the Bible, the oldest parts of it, was written 4,000 years ago, it has not lost its appeal to many people. And as you read the Bible, you really understand and have that feeling that there's a ring of truth about what I'm reading. And the reason there's a ring of truth is because it's true, right? It is true. 
and any honest inquirer of the scriptures will eventually admit that the Bible is true. And then we go now and look on the screen to the very first verse of the Bible. Back, did I not put that in there? I'm sorry, back up. Uh, Genesis 1.1, we all know that, don't we? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God, declaring that God existed, created the heavens, plural, the skies that we see in the upper atmosphere and the universe, and the earth. God is centered to the earth. And, and the Bible just makes the assumption that God exists as if it's not necessary to explain his existence. Because as you look at this marvelous creation that's all around us, it proves the fact that there is a, a creator out there that makes all this. The Bible pretends that the creator already existed when it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you believe Genesis 1-1, then you can believe the rest of the Bible. You have no problem believing that God is active in the world, that he performed miracles, that uh, he gave us principles to live by and to conduct our lives and how to think and how to act and how to be. Uh, you can believe that God came down as a human, lived a sinless life. You can believe that God died on the cross through his son Jesus to pay for our sins, that he arose from the dead, that he's coming again, that he is our judge, and will, we will stand before him one day and give an account of your life. If you believe Genesis 1-1, then you can believe all the rest of it. Genesis 1-1 is the foundation of the Bible. It is a foundation of life. Genesis 1-1, in my humble opinion, and believe, it's hum believe me, it's humble. Just ask me. I'll tell you how humble I am. But, all right, Genesis 1-1, in my opinion, is the most important verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God is. He exists. And he exists as described in the Judeo-Christian Bible. Not the Koran, not any other religious writing. It, he exists and is as described in the Bible. Now, many people do not want God, the God as described in the Bible to exist. They think he is too demanding, he's mean, too harsh, too many rules, a killjoy, uh, just looking for an excuse to punish mankind. And a lot of people think, you know, why can't God just leave us alone? You know, if I want to practice recreational sex, then why does he have to interfere with that? If I want to be homosexual, why does he have to have a word about that? Uh, if I want to be, if I want to call myself a man when I'm a woman, uh, then, you know, what's that, what business is that of God? If, if I want to just amass more and more and more possessions, you know, it brings me happiness. There's only one life. God just let me alone. Let me live the way I want to live. And blank, whatever that blank is, brings me happiness. Just leave me alone. It's my life. It's, I want to live the way that pleases me. Just leave me alone. But if you think honestly and deeply without bias about why we humans exist, then the God of the Bible is the only viable option. How did we get here? Who made us? You know, what, what's the answer to that? Did we evolve? I mean, the options are pretty, pretty small, really, aren't there? There's God that created us, or there's evolution, or a few years ago, back when I was a teenager, there was a guy that wrote a book that said that aliens came and put people here somehow. Right, So there was that going around for a while. But really, uh, it is God or we just evolved. And uh, look on the screen. I think one of the best uh, succinct definitions of evolution is nothing plus time plus chance equals everything. You start with nothing. Where did, where did all this come from? All right. Uh, and so you, you add just unlimited amounts of time and then just chance, and that is everything. Or there's some people now that say that the universe is eternal. 
You know, you Christians say that God is eternal, has always been. Well, we say the universe is eternal, that it's always been. So that's an argument. But if you accept evolution, then there's some questions that you must really answer, be able to answer. For example, what is life? What exactly is life? Now, we believe we're created in the image of God, and he breathed in us as a living soul, right? But other than that, what is life? And then another thing, if you believe in evolution, how did life come out of non-living, a non-living thing? If, if 14 billion years ago, there was nothing but this tiny mass, and then suddenly there was the Big Bang, and with an incomprehensible amount of power that exploded this tiny mass, and then all the starry skies and the fireballs and the galaxies and the, and the energy and all of that was far flung from that tiny mass out into the universe. And the gravity was able to, to be formed and gases and atoms and, and they were flung light years away from each other. You know, 186,000 miles a second times the year of time, distances, it's all, all, almost incomprehensible how to believe, and you have all of that, then what caused, out of that non-living things, all they are, what caused life to come out of that? How did that happen? How could that happen? And then we humans, if we evolved, how did we get the ability to think? What created emotions? And feelings in us? How did we evolve a personality? You know, how did the immaterial part of us come into existence through evolution? How can that possibly be? Now, if you, you have probably, most here, probably seen a dead body. You know, as a police chaplain, I've seen several folks that have passed away, and some just seconds. <coughs> and it's amazing the, the effect of the body when the soul leaves the body becomes like a lump of clay it becomes like a thing isn't it you know it used to it was so animated and thinking and loving and and now the soul is left and it's it's just just an object sort of i mean how can this immaterial part of us just evolve and where are the missing links? They talk about missing links. Well, the missing links are missing, right? I mean, when's the last time you saw a bird that became something else? You know, where, where are those missing links? And uh, why are there not any current examples of an animal that's, you know, has been around for uh, supposedly all these millions of years? Why isn't it, why isn't there new things evolving right now? We can say, oh, you know, I have chickens in my house. It's been new baby chicks. It was here last week. It's been interesting to watch them grow. But, you know, they're going to be chickens. I, I don't know if they're going to evolve into something higher, right? Uh, they're just that species. Where are those new current animals that's been involved? And uh, another thing, and next week, Lord willing, we're going to talk about, it's amazing. There's a lot of information lately. Uh, in books and so forth, on the fine-tuned universe. Have you ever heard of that? The fine-tuned universe. Well, come next week, all right? There's a little teaser. Uh, this universe, you know, the, the Earth had to be in positioned in the Milky Way galaxy just like it is at the right degree and so forth, the right amount of mass. If you took the mass of one dime and that was changed, then life couldn't exist. Well, I'll come next week and I'll share that with you, all right? So, so people that believe in evolution have some big questions to answer. And people who study mathematical statistics, and their pay grade is way above mine, all right? Uh, they, because I'm still trying to figure out how to, to, uh, to balance my checkbook, you know? Um, the churches is fine because Kim takes care of it, but, you know, math was not my forte, all right? Um, because I'm from Arkansas, all right? And so, um, no offense, Arkansas, I love the state, but it wasn't my forte. But people who study mathematics 
And there's a man named Henry Morse. Some of you may have heard of him. He's in heaven today. He was a Christian scientist, authored many books, brilliant man. But I came across an article of his. It was called The Mathematical Improbability of Evolution. And so he, here's his illustration. And he says, uh, imagine a living organism that has 200 integrated and functional parts. All right, so it's living, and it just has 200 parts in it that are interacting and working together functioning. Now, your human body has many more than 200, right? You have 206 bones. Then you have the ligaments and the tendons and the cartridge. That's just that. And then you have the respiratory uh, uh, part of you, the, the circulatory, the brain, the nerves, the reproductive, the intestines, uh, the digestive system, the skin, the largest, largest organ in your body, all those systems. And then all the little components that makes up that. Plus, you have nearly 100 trillion cells in you. All right? So this living organism has only 200 all right 200 so here it is on the screen there's 200 there all right um now the probability of 200 successive mutations occurring in that that being is one chance out of 10 to the the 60th power, or one chance in with a number 60 zeros behind it, or one chance out of a trillion, 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 trillion of this creature mutating, evolving into a, a, a organism that has 200 components. Now, here's how that works. All right, you start with one component, all right? All right, so it's got to mutate. The chance of mutations in the body being successful, scientists say is about one out of a thousand, right? But let's be real generous to the evolutionists and say it's a 50-50 chance. So you mutate, so you have one, now you have two. And so, you know, but they have to work, they have to function, and then the two mutates, and now you have four. And there's only, though, one out of a thousand chance that that mutation is beneficial to that organism, right? Uh, but we're going to let, let just one out of, one out of two. So, you, you know, there's a mutation and one is bad. All right, well, the next time is good. So you keep having that happening up to the, finally you get to 200 successive mutations that are successful and creates this organism that can function and integrate and so forth. And that's the chance of that being successful. One out of a trillion, 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 trillion. A trillion is a thousand million, all right? A thousand million. So the point is, the point is that the, the chances of things evolving through mutations, no matter how much time you give it, it's almost silly to think that that's even possible. But yet, that's what they're clinging to. Just, they say, time, you know, give it enough time. There is that possibility. There is that chance. The mutations will work. And that's just one organism. But think about the trees and the flowers and the birds and all the other animals. And you, your body has all these things. It's impossibility. It's an impossibility mathematically for people to or things to evolve. Now, that means... There has to be someone that transcends the universe. You know what transcends is? You're outside of. You're outside of the universe that caused all these things to come into existence. There's a man named William Craig Lane. How many of you have heard of him? All right, brilliant guy. Uh, you can go to YouTube. He debates on college campuses. Uh, he defends the faith. He defends uh, creation. And here's what he said. If you go to the next slide, here's what he said. Whatever begins to exist has a cause of its existence. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause to its existence. Now, at one time, there was no universe, right? Then the universe began to exist. Meaning, 
that there had to be a cause of, that, of the universe to begin. In the beginning, God. The, even the scientists say there was a big bang, right? All right, so what he's saying is there has to be a reason that this vast universe, as magnificent and amazing as it is, there has to be a reason, a cause of it to come into existence. Now, we know what that is, don't we? It's not what, it's who? God. God is the cause. He is the designer. He is the maker of all of this. He transcends it, he's outside of it, and he makes it. All right? Now, you think about your life. Think about all the tools and, and the things in your life. Think about all the little, even the most simple things that you use. Every one of them had to have a designer and a maker. All right, look on the screen. What is this? That's a needle, right? Did a needle evolve? <laughs> Probably started out as a bone somewhere. Some, you know, maybe American Indians say, hey, I got a tear in my buckskin here, and so I need to fix it, right? So someone had to see a need and say, I, I need something to sew with. And here's a metal one, you know. How do you make a metal needle? Does anyone know how to make a metal needle, right? If you, you know, if, if there was, let me tell you, if there was a catastrophe, or Armageddon happened, we was all back in the Stone Age, I would be hard-pressed to make anything. <laughs> I don't know how to make metal stuff, you know. Um, you know, I can make trouble, but I don't know how to make metal stuff, all right? How do you make a needle? There had to be a designer and a maker. How about the next thing here? How about a paper clip? Anyone know how to get the iron and all that out of the ground and smelt it and form it and, and uh, make it into a paper clip? It has to have a designer, does it? It has to have a maker to do that. How, some, how about something more complicated like a pencil? All right. All right, so now a pencil has multiple parts to it, doesn't it? It has the wood. It has the, we used to call them lead pencils. It's actually graphite and clay. You can go to YouTube, see a very interesting uh, little video, how they make pencils. Go to the next one. That's enough of that one. All right, how, you know, so, you know, how do you, how do you put that pencil, that wood together? How do you get that graphite round? How do you get it inside there? How do you, how do you paint it? You know, uh, how do you get the metal thing that holds the eraser? How do you make an eraser? You know, how about an ink pen? You know, they're even more complicated. And so how do you, how do you think about all the people involved in making a pencil or a pen? I mean, someone has to get the iron out of the ground. Someone has to make the plastic. Someone has to uh, manufacture all that. It has to be distributed. It has to be stored. It has to be sold. Hundreds of people to get that little pencil to you. Or the ink pen. All of that says there has to be a designer and a maker. And even the more complicated things, such as laptop, iPhones, all that, has many, many more component parts. There has to be, has to be a designer and maker. And it's ridiculous to say that all that just happened. And it's even more ridiculous to say that we humans that have these magnificent, complicated, amazing bodies just evolved through time and chance and mutations. There is a designer and a maker. And the Bible declares it over and over. 26 of the 66 books in the Bible, a third of the Old Testament, and nearly half of the New Testament declare God is the maker. Look on the, on the screen, if you would. This will build your faith. Nehemiah said, You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them. And you preserve them all. The host of heaven worships you. The next verse, he says in uh, Psalm 102, Oh, of old you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will endure. Yes, they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will change them, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will, ne will have no end. And then the next verse, if you would, Isaiah, To whom then will I, you liken me? 
Or to whom shall I be, I be equal, says the Holy One. There is none, is there? No one's equal to God. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who bring out their hosts by number. He called them all by name, by the greatness of, the might, of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. God has named every star. You're Bob. You're, you know, he's named every star. Every, there's billions of galaxies, billions of stars, and God has named them all. And then Hebrews, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. God didn't start with anything. He started with nothing. And he just describes it, and I don't think we can grasp it totally until we get to heaven. He says, he spoke, and there was light. He spoke in this. What is the process that he did? We will see. And he'll explain it to us. It'd be, it'd be so fascinating to hear. Here's how I did this. Right now, it's, there's nothing that's visible to show us, hey, God said, this is what I used to make all these things. It's impossible for us to understand that. But we accept it by faith. So the Bible declares that God is. That's one thing. Uh, the second thing is there's a fine-tuned universe. It's telling us that God is. The, the verses he read in Psalms, we'll look at that, Lord willing, next week. But then what else tells us that God is? And we'll conclude with this, and I'll be just a couple minutes more. Your conscience tells you that God exists. God made you with, a, with an awareness of him inside you he knew that he would be denied he would be lied about that there would be ungodly philosophies such as evolution <coughs> that would invade this world he knew that satan would deceive us and we humans are so sinful that we would run from him just like our father adam did so he created in us a feeling a conscience that we have a creator, that God indeed lives. The proof is added on the screen, Romans 2, 14. For, and in, in the book of Romans, <coughs> in the first three chapters, Paul's laying out the sinfulness of mankind. Romans 1, he talks about the Jewish sinfulness. In Romans 2, he's talking about the, the, the non-Jewish people and how sinful we are. In Romans 3, he just... Just broad strokes it all. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But in Romans 2.14, For when Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, who do not have the law, the Jewish people were given the law, the Old Testament, the commandments. A lot of the Gentile people didn't have access to it. They were over in South America at the time that it was written. Uh, but by nature, do the things in the law. You know, they know we better not steal. And they may steal, but they still are pricked in their conscience about it. Although not having the law are a law unto themselves. And the next verse, <coughs> who show the work of the law, law written in their hearts. Who put that there? God. Their conscience also bearing witness. And between themselves, their thoughts accusing or excusing them. So God has placed into every being this conscience, this awareness of him that says, I am. And as they get to know him, as they respond to that light, as they get to know him, then they'll know that he loves them and that they've sinned against them and that he's made a way to save them from their sins. And God is to be known, he's to be trusted, he's to be loved, he's to be enjoyed, he's to be obeyed, he's to be served, he's to be declared. And that's what we want to do as a church. That's what we want to do as followers of Christ. And, you know, a lot of people who say, I believe in God, but they, they're really practicing atheists. Because they, don't, they live like there is no God. He's written all these laws and love letter to us on how to live. And we tend to ignore it because we want to do what we want to do. And today we're going to have a song, praise band or praise group if you would come. And I really want us to, I want you to sing it first by yourself, all right? And it's a great old hymn. 
Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. I want you to listen to the words of this, and then we will, we will sing it together in a moment. But let them sing it first. But if you're here today, and you don't know Christ as your Savior, then God, out of love for you, came to this earth as a human, but yet sinless. We are sinful, he's sinless. And he went to a cross, and that cross, he died. And he was, it, it was taking on our sins. And he paid for the, the great penalty of sin between us and God. And he now offers the gift of everlasting life if you will ask him to save you and humble your, your heart and trust in him alone to give you everlasting life. If you've never done that, then when we dismiss in a moment, grab my or get one of get one of these folks here. They'll they will be able to have to talk to you and share the gospel with you, and you can be saved today. If you are saved and you're a follower of Christ, uh, this let's say you know I am so convinced he's real today. I have more ammunition. I want to tell somebody the good news and go out and share the gospel with someone so that they can enjoy and know God as well. Sing this song if you would. And well, you don't have to you need to see the words, but I want you to sing this song to the Lord as a prayer. As if you're a follower of Christ, Lord, I want this true. I want you to have your way in my life. Let's sing a verse or two of this as a prayer uh, to Him, if you would. All right, lead us if you would. Our Father in heaven, we do want you to have your way with us. May we be totally yielded to you moment by moment. May we live in, the, in your presence and understand, Father, you are right there with us, observing, judging, and rewarding us according to how we live. And Father, we want to be pleasing to you. We want to let others know that you exist by our attitude, by our speech, by, Father, our conduct. And we want to be good representatives of you to this needy world. 
And we pray, Father, that this study will build the faith of our people and strengthen them. And then I ask, Lord, if there's anyone here that's not saved, they will not leave this campus this day uh, before they receive Christ as Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated just for a quick moment. Um, if you uh, don't have your uh, picture made in the directory, if you'll see Jamala, or Jamal, will meet you right back there. We want to get that and get those to you next week, Lord be willing. So get your picture made if you would. And again, I want to thank the, the men that cooked last week and all that. Uh, one quick thing about our building project, we're still working on getting some uh, new bids uh, to try to find out where we are on this process. So keep praying about that, um, that God will just... Give us real clear direction of what to do. Um, and so we want to, we'll give you that report as soon as we get more information on that. So just keep praying right now if you would. And if you have a million dollars you don't need, uh, just drop in that little box right there on your way out, okay? And we'll put it to good use. And uh, by the way, offerings are go right there, or you can give online. And uh, again, thank you for those who are watching uh, uh, online. We do appreciate that very much. We have life groups right now, small groups in the other building, the ladies class down the hall. We invite you to stay to those and continue uh, to learn the Word of God today. All right, would you stay? Stand to your feet, please. And uh, Jerry, would you come and dismiss us in prayer? Father, we thank you for the music and the word that's gone forth. And, and Father, we just uh, ask you to bless the rest of this day, the Lord's Day, and uh, help the other ministries, the life group ministries, the children's ministries. And uh, may we pour it out to you as a drink offering, as David said. And Father God, we just thank you so much. Be with our families and our friends. Help us to win the lost at any cost. In Jesus' name, amen.